Okay, um, you know, a lot of this stuff that we're doing, where we're learning to find zeros and translations and transformations of the functions and, you know, learning how to look at them and see how many turning points they may have, whether it opens up or down, all of those things that we've been working on um, throughout this entire, you know, set of, of um, videos you know, is a little bit obsolete, I guess I should say at this point, because, you know, now in this day and age, we have, everybody has a graphing calculator. We can graph functions and see exactly what they look like. But, you know, that was not always the case. A long, long time ago, you know, these people who were um, trying to find all these similarities and all of these patterns and things, they didn't have these graphing calculators. I mean, it's their stuff that we have based our graphing calculators on. All of the things that they figured out years ago, we now benefit from. So what we're finding, what we're learning here is kind of to appreciate some of the things that they went through and that they figured out um, after doing many, many, many of these problems. Well, you know, take for instance if, you know, a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, if they were trying to figure out what a particular function looked like. You know, the only options really that they had was just to plot points. Tons and tons and tons of points. So they came up with some little things that they started noticing. Things that made um, them go faster. Um, things like, for instance, um, the degree of the polynomial, like in this case is a 5, then they figured out that it can have at most four turning points, one less. Those are the kinds of things that help them because if they knew that it had four turning points, then it could do, let's see, something along the lines of um, this. If it went down and turned and came back up and turned and went back down and turned and went back up and turned, how many turning points is that? Well, that would be one, two, three, four. If they found those, they knew they didn't have to look for any more because this graph could not possibly turn around and go back up again just because of its degree. So all of those things kind of, they started going, oh, how about that? We don't have to keep graphing we, or, or plotting points. We understand what it looks like. Well, some other things that they figured out was a polynomial function of degree n where that number is bigger than 1, has at most n real zeros. And if you think about it, the equations that we've been working before, something like x squared equals, or x squared plus 7x plus 10, when we factored this down, this had two answers, x equals something and x equals something. Um, if we were to solve an equation that looked like, you know, x plus 5 equals 2, well, that only has one answer for x. That's what this is talking about. The degree of the polynomial tells you the most number of zeros or answers that your problem can have. Well, because of that, looking at something like this, this is an x to the fifth equation, then that means that that can have no more than five zeros or five x-intercepts. And think about what I drew a while ago whenever I did something like this because it can only have at most four turning points, then the maximum number of times it can cross the x-axis would be one, two, three, four, five. In order to have more than that, it would have to turn around and go back. So all of these things work together to help them to be able to figure out, um, you know, when they had, you know, when they needed to keep looking, and when they could stop. So we're going to learn a little bit about the possibilities of zeros in the next video.